Uh, welcome to a webinar series for library and information science students uh, brought to you by the International Federation of Library Association and Institutions, IFLAR, Division 4. I am Albina Krymska. I'm the secretary of the Standing Committee on the Section and Education and the secretary of the Division 4. We're delighted you joined us today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Before we begin today, I just want to give you a brief overview about the Division 4. The, the function of our division is to coordinate the professional activities of its members and ensure good communication among its sections. Support of the profession, with, with the, which is Division 4, includes seven sections and four special interest groups. These units were very helpful and uh, active in making today's webinar happen. So thank you to all of them. Thank you to IFLA headquarters for their highly professional support. Uh, now I'd like to share uh, several slides with you. Just a second. Today we are having their third webinar in the project called a webinar series for library and information science students. I remind uh, to those of you who attend our webinars for the first time that the IFLAR Division 4 created this event as a platform for students to share their projects, ideas, and research about different topics related to libraries. During first uh, two webinars, LIS students shared their experience in engaging with library associations and told about library projects they initiated for libraries. Those two webinars were very productive and interesting, and we hope today's topic will be interesting and inspiring as well. Topic for today's uh, webinar is uh, LIS degree requirement, internships, practicums, or field experiences. This event is being recorded, including chat. Video will be posted on YouTube, and the link will be posted on the web pages of IFLA Division 4 and its units and social media, of course, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, others. Uh, microphones have been muted for this event. If you have any questions or comments, please type into the Q&A box. If you have any questions about technical support or IFLA activities or events, please type into the chat function. The talk, uh, uh, if you have any questions or issues uh, about uh, privacy, you can uh, contact us through professional support at ifla.org. Today we will have four presentations from the Philippines, India, Pakistan, and Croatia presented by students from these countries. And uh, today is a, a special day for us and for our project because we have IFLA president-elect Barbara Lison as the keynote speaker. And it is an honor for us. And thank you, Barbara, for joining us to speak at today's webinar. Uh, you know, when uh, I was preparing for today's uh, webinar and surfing the internet uh, to gather more information about you, Barbara, uh, though I had your bio and some biographical uh, details uh, are on this slide, but I wanted to find something uh, that um, not repeated very often. So uh, I'd like to turn our attention to an interesting interview you gave to new professionals uh, uh, special interest group a couple of years ago and uh, new professionals uh, is one of the units that organizes this uh, today uh, today's webinar so the interview called six uh, questions to Barbara Lison and in that interview uh, Barbara you told about uh, their librarian's best friend uh, that is a, a curiosity for the world and for the people. And you consider the library as a place for communication with people, for knowledge and for learning. Uh, and what I liked the most, uh, you recommended a book to read, uh, Matilda by uh, Royal uh, Dahl, published in 1980s, about uh, a girl uh, who finds her way into the life 
with the help of an excellent teacher and a great librarian. So when I read it, I uh, thought of IFLA that unites uh, librarians and educators, that is teachers. So I think IFLA with uh, the help of uh, its members uh, helps uh, our communities, uh, each uh, individual uh, find their way into life. And today we have a librarian and a teacher at our webinar as speakers. Uh, please uh, welcome Barbara. And thank you, Barbara, for joining us to speak at our uh, today's uh, webinar. And I turn it to you, Barbara. I guess uh, Barbara is uh, connecting right now. Something happened. So we're waiting for her. While we're waiting for Barbara, I would like to uh, introduce our moderator, Paria Tajilipu, who will be moderating the sessions with students. And uh, also uh, we have uh, two uh, members of uh, New Professionals, a special interest group, uh, Maya Simonovic and uh, Magdalena Gamulka, who will uh, be moderating uh, the chat and the Q&A. So you can ask them as many questions and as you, you would like to ask them. So we're waiting for Barbara right now. And uh, while we're waiting for, for her, uh, please uh, type your name and your country in the chat box. And we are very interested in where you're from and uh, how you, um, okay. and how you got to know about our webinar. So here is Barbara. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ivina, I, I had a problem with my internet connection. Uh, I didn't get what you were uh, saying about me. Could you just repeat it shortly? <laughs> because I'm really interested. Yes, in yes. I, I said that uh, we, uh, I, I found your interview that you gave to new professionals uh, special interest group two years ago. It was called uh, Six uh, Questions uh, to Barbara Lison. And uh, in that interview, you mentioned uh, about uh, uh, the book, uh, interesting book, uh, which is called Matilda, about a girl who found her way uh, thanks to the uh, librarian and to the teacher. So I compared um, uh this uh, like um, this story with ifla that unites uh librarians and educators and uh, we are happy that today we have a great librarian uh, as our keynote speaker you <laughs> and we have a teacher kathleen obil who will speak uh, also and she will uh, tell us about la's education in the philippines so we're very pleased you, to have you both here today. Thank you, Albina. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, hello, everybody. I'm so glad that I can share with you my thoughts about our profession. Um, you are, as I just posted yesterday on my LinkedIn account, you are the assets of the future of our profession. And so I'm really happy that I have the opportunity to talk to you. Now I will try to share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Yep. Can you see it now? It works. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope everything is okay. So my, my presentation uh, has the title, uh, Librarian, a profession with many, many challenges. And you will see what the challenges are in my opinion. Um, I think still a challenge is that people think that librarians are boring, dull, uninteresting people. And um, there is, uh, by Ruth Kneel, there was a, a book, You Don't Look Like a Librarian. That is a book which is a bit, I mean, the title is a bit provocative, but I, do you think that this is the best compliment a librarian can get? I'm not really sure, but we have to still cope with that challenge uh, from the beginning on. My opinion is that librarians are multifaceted like a Swiss pen knife. Perhaps you know these pen knives where all different functions are united in one knife, in one small knife. And I think we are a profession which uh, can be illustrated by that picture. So the scenarios which I uh, want you to show, in my opinion, have a, an important background for our work and for our profession is that the environment has changed and is changing. Information is becoming the oil of the 21st century. And still uh, our profession says, and of course other um, uh, like the UNESCO says that information shall stay accessible for everyone because information is the basic for a democratic society. What does that mean for us as librarians? So uh, we were a human, we are a human explorer for up-to-date information. We are still finding the right information. We are an agent for access to information and we are facilitators to unbiased and secure information. Scenario two is the librarian as a fact finder. When you look at the environment where we are in now, that social media increasingly influences public opinion. So without being in social media, you're almost not existent as a person. Misinformation is hard to track and to prove because when information is spread, people tend to never have, a, or tend to have a look, not to have a look uh, where the, this information comes from. And when you go, look to the polls and the surveys, the trust in governance and government and also in public institutions is going down. What does that mean for us as librarians? We should enhance our role as fact finders. We should also try to reveal misinformation strategies and to, pro to promote them to people so people can understand and find whether an information is correct or not. That means we are a facilitator of critical thinking. And at the end, that means that we should be a trust building profession. So the next is um, that the lib oh, sorry, that the librarian is a um, the agent for equality. Um, we need information on all levels for children, for adults, for any other um, profession. But you see the wealth of the world is unequally distributed and this unequal uh, distribution still is increasing also in the time of pandemics. You know all about the climate change and its horrible consequences which it might have. And precarious, pre precarious work conditions, of course, are also a threat and a challenge to us. What does that mean for us as librarians? Of course, we should strive to adapt and to promote the most useful technology for information. And we should support um, this new world as in the role of a game changer. We are a game changer. We should work like that. And of course, we are an agent for collaboration as well, because 
we cannot be alone in doing our work. We need partners, we need to collaborate. And of course, we also are an agent for participation. That means we need to integrate people into our work to improve our work. So when you are a manager uh, in a library, you have coming out of these um, backgrounds, you have a lot of challenges to face because um, in many countries, uh, many library workers will be retiring in the next few years, a lot, at least in Europe. Um, the future generations are much smaller in number. There's not so many people who want really to, to become a librarian anymore because maybe of this first picture I have shown you. So um, there is another thing that the library profession in many countries is a typically women's profession. And we also, especially with the technology aspect, we also should introduce uh, the interest of librarianship to the male part of the world. Um, and of course, we have to follow the technical and social changes in the world. Uh, because we then have to follow them and to help people to, to cope with these changes. But that means that we also all the time have to reorient ourselves in our business. And of course, uh, the pu public budgets will make less and less money available for libraries, especially now after the pandemic. So, it is necessary that we recognize and accept and work on a paradigm shift um, from, informing, so from informing profession to an involving profession, from a profession that gives access to information to a profession that felicitates exchange. Um, we should also um, try to help people who are alienated from politics uh, to become more, again, civic, uh, or to, in, uh, to take up civic engagements. Um, there is a lot of people who think, well, democracy is there. They consume democracy, but we also should help them to become active participants of democracy. And the social capital is in many places, the social capital is, is eroding. So our work also shall contribute to building social coherence in the society. Sometimes um, a profession says, well, that's our profession and there's their problem. It's the people's problem. No, we have to accept that it is our problem. And we are experts, that's for sure. That's for sure, because we are librarians, we have studied it, or you are studying it as well, but it should be a public domain, not a closed shop domain. And of course, one thing is important, we should not always look at concerns, but we also try to look at the opportunities which come even out of concerns and out of risks. So what are the learning skills for the 21st century librarians. You have them here. The learning skills are critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, and then, of course, that's what we learn in the profession, the literacy skills, which we have, and very important personal skills, like flexibility, learning about leadership, being initiative, being productive and have a lot of social skills. Of course, the corona pandemic um, kind of deterred a bit what we are doing and how we are doing it, but we should not start thinking, well, there is the corona, we need not do any more, we cannot do any more, but especially now we have to act. So what I want to show you in my short presentation is that not, I don't want to talk about professional issues, I want to talk about your personality and the personal skills which a librarian should have, in my opinion. So when you look at uh, these pictures, these pictures, they are librarians, they are different, they are different from the first picture which we, ha which we had. 
And always think the library is you. You are not somebody who is working in a library. You are the library. And you should also have that in mind that people who meet you and know you are a librarian think you are the library. And the image of the library is depending on you. So uh, when you think about your personal uh, attributes about your personal appearance, it is important that you know that the first impression which you make to other people is the most decisive. There is a, the psychologists, uh, they created a 93% rule. When you look at these 93%, how uh, they are distributed, so 55% of your of your image is appearance and body language. 38% is sound, volume, and speed, pitch of speed. And then look, and this is really astonishing, I think, only 7% are the content of your speech. So people only look at you from your body appearance first, from the sound and volume of your speech, and then only 7% are impressing when it comes to content. So it is important that you understand it's my person who also contributes to the promotion of the content, even more than the content itself sometimes. So the first impression is decisive, as I said, that means in the first three seconds of a meeting, a person for which we meet for the first time have already formed their sensation about us, about our social status, about our attitude and opinion, about our education, about our belief, about our gender, and about our friendliness and approachability. The first three seconds, imagine. And also, of course, about our skills not our professional skills. So communication psychology says, use your positive personality to influence others to be a good professional. And what can you use? The most important factors are positive thinking and a positive mindset, showing empathy, showing uh, social intelligence and social competence. So being self-confident, believing in oneself, and also be ready to change, to have a general attitude of change. Understanding it's not about me, it's about the others. This is my profession. It's, I do the profession because I work for others, not for myself. Um, that was, I think, something which I always think is so important to have in mind. But being the incoming president of IFLA, of course, I would like to show you also some quickly, some how IFLA supports the library profession to meet these challenges. Perhaps you have heard about the process of the global vision that was some years ago, and there were found 10 highlights 22,000 librarians worldwide were connected and integrated in that process and they contributed. And there were 10 highlights and opportunities for our profession. Um, and this is the key findings. We are united globally in our goals and values and we must connect global and local actions effectively. I want to just show you some of the, high, of the highlights. Of course, we are dedicated to equal and free access to information and knowledge. But what we have to do, this is an opportunity, but also a challenge. We must be champions of intellectual freedom. Otherwise, we could not fulfill the task. The second highlight is we remain deeply committed to supporting literacy, learning and reading. Of course, we must update our traditional role in the digital age to fulfill the task. And this is a big challenge as well. 
we are focused on serving our communities. Yes, we are. But who are our communities? So the challenge is to understand our communities better and design services for their impact. The fourth highlight is we embrace digital innovation. And that means, of course, we need to follow the ongoing technical changes. The fifth highlight is we have leaders who see the need of strong advocacy. And of course, we have to be an advocate ourselves as well. The sixth highlight is, of course, money, money. We need funding. And of course, we shall show our stakeholders, those who fund us, the value and impact of our libraries. And we see the need to build collaboration and partnerships. And of course, we have to have a spirit of collaboration. We want less bureaucratic, very important. We want to be less inflexible and we want to be re less resistant to change. So we have to change. And we are guardians of the memory of the world, that's for sure. We need the access, we need to maximize the access to the world's documentary heritage. And that's for you, that's especially for you. The tenth highlight, our young professionals are deeply committed and eager to lead. And what does that mean for us as a challenge? We must give young professionals effective opportunities to learn, to develop and to lead. These 10 highlights are so important for our profession. And fr starting from these 10 highlights of the global vision, IFLA and of course everybody together with the governing board of the membership, IFLA um, or developed a new strategy which is relevant from 2019 to 2024. And this new strategy has four fields. First field is strengthen the global voice of library. Second field is inspire and enhance professional practice. Third is connect and empower the field. And fourth, optimize the organization. So if you have a time, have a look at the IFLA website where you can find everything about the new strategy. And I just want to show you an example, inspire and enhance the professional practice. So we inspire the profession through future thinking and by encouraging new and promising approaches. That is very important. And for now, the first, I think one of the last slides is, have a look at the first virtual IFLA Congress, the World Intellectual and Information, uh, the World Information and Communication Congress. And it will be between the 17th and 19th of August. It will be three days in three time zones. The registration is open now. And I hope that you can find uh, enough money because it's even less than 100 euros. It's less than normally in, uh, the participation costs for the real IFLA Congress. So you see the uh, the, the link to that uh, website and have a look uh, to register and take part in this new event of intellect an in international virtual conference of IFLA. So be enabled, be inspired, engaged and connected in the sense of IFLA. And, you know, I have seen this already in your background in one of the background of yours. We are IFLA, we all are IFLA. You are already a FLA, even if you are still a student. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. We are impressed by your presentation. And I would like to tell you that when we uh, created this project, this uh, series of uh, webinars for LIS students, we um, aligned this uh, with the IFLA strategy. And I'll just uh, mention one of uh, it, this uh, uh, zone, uh, like in, engages, uh, this project engages uh, LIS students to be members 
of a professional library community, introducing them to professional competences and providing them with experiences that they can apply to future participation in IFLA activities. So this was one of the goals Excellent. of the project. And so we are very happy that uh, we have uh, uh, such a good attendance uh, uh, of this project uh, through uh, these uh, three months. Um, we started it in April and we had uh, three webinars. Today it's uh, our third webinar. And I would just like to tell you that uh, uh, we have, we have, uh, we've had 14 students that uh, participated in these three webinars and they uh, represent uh, uh, a wide a range of countries. And we're very happy that these countries are from um, all regions of IFLA. So we're very happy that this uh, uh, webinar is um, uh, very popular among uh, professional community and among LAS students uh, because they need this uh, activity. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. And all the best for you. I have to go to another meeting, but uh, I'm so happy that I could share my thoughts with you. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, our next uh, speaker uh, is the assistant professor from the uh, University of the Philippines uh, School of Library and Information Studies, uh, Kathleen Obelier. And uh, just uh, a brief information about her. You can see it on this slide. And I would just... Uh, I'd like to share why we are so interested in Kathleen. Uh, during these three webinars, uh, there, there was one country that was very uh, active in these webinars, and this is the Philippines. So uh, it was very uh, interesting to us uh, how uh, you prepare um, librarians in your uh, schools and so uh, right now, Kathleen is uh, ready to share uh, their, her school's experience with us. I turn it to you, Kate. Thank you, Albina. <laughs> I'm glad that um, our students and the participants from the Philippines made a good impression. So I'll just uh, try to share my screen there. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, good day everyone. And I'm here to talk about uh, LAS internship programs here in the Philippines, not just from our school, but for all LAS schools here in the Philippines. And um, to give you some insight, I have to share some context uh, from the Philippines. The Philippines is the first uh, in Southeast Asia to offer library science courses through the College of Liberal Arts of the University of the Philippines. And this was in 1914. So if you can see at the photo, we celebrated 100 years of LIS education back in 2014. Soon after, other colleges and universities in the Philippines followed suit. There are now about 70 LIS schools in the Philippines offering the Bachelor of Library and Information Science, and some of them offer the Master in Library and Information Science. Our LIS uh, programs here in the uh, Philippines are primarily in the baccalaureate or in the undergraduate program, which is a sufficient entry level for work here, provided that you finish or you um, uh, pass the licensure examination. So this photo shows um, our students here in UPS LIS after uh, their orientation on how to prepare books for circulation. Librarianship is a regulated profession here in the Philippines. The Republic Act 9246 or the Philippine Librarianship Act of 2003 prescribes the parameters of practicing librarianship here. 
While the Commission on uh, Higher Education prescribes the policies, standards, and guidelines for the implementation of the Bachelor of Library and Information Science program, where library practice or internship is a prescribed course. There are two library practice courses with three units each. So that's a total of six units of library practice and a uh, total of uh, 400 or 200 hours for each un uh, course. Um, and they are required to spend 200 hours per course and take the library practice course for uh, each semester that they are in their senior year. The students are also expected to go for library internship in all the four types of libraries. LIS schools enter into a um, memorandum of agreement with their host institutions, and it is required that um, licensed librarians uh, supervise our interns to ensure that the proper application of knowledge is done. The course has a syllabus where the goals, outcomes, activities, and course deliverables are outlined. The deliverables include reflection papers, journals, uh, peer evaluation, evaluation by the supervisor, and daily time record, among others. The requirements vary per LIS school, but the objective is for the student to document their experience and uh, to reflect on what they have learned. Guided by the course syllabus, any LIS faculty member of an LIS school can handle the course. With our partner institutions, we make sure that the students go through technical and public services within their internship. Our internship programs are also divided as internal uh, and external, where internal is, of course, uh, internship within the campus and external is outside the campus. Most LIS schools have an academic, uh, academic and school library, so this takes care of the first uh, course. And um, for the second uh, LIS practice, uh, they either spend all 200 hours in a public or special library or divide this and spend 100 hours in each. What we teach in class are mainly theories, concepts, models, standards, and the like. Through the internship programs, these theories are put into practice, thereby enhancing their knowledge. We have seen how a good internship program contributes to their good performance in the licensure exams. Here are students from the La Salle University in Osamis indexing newspaper entries. One of the keys to a successful internship program, aside from a well-prepared memorandum of agreement and syllabus, is the good relationship of the host institution and LIS school. In this photo are some of our interns and their supervisors who are also our, our alumni. It is convenient that they are our alumni because they already have an appreciation of the internship program and they also have fresh ideas on how to go about it. For some LIS schools, uh, they adopt their host institutions for their extension programs. They conduct reading programs or tutoring and many more. In the photo are students from the University of San Agustin in their reading program with the Apollinario Mabini Elementary School. Most LIS schools, as they were transitioning to the K plus 12 curriculum, did not have any senior students last year, so they had no interns. But for UPSLIS, um, we had students and therefore we had to work on how we can uh, conduct the internship program in our remote learning environment. According to our dean, uh, she came up with creative solutions to provide our students with an internship in a flexible learning modality. 
supervised by the SLIS head librarian, most activities were done or uh, online or submitted uh, via email. And uh, these activities included creation of instructional materials such as video or infographics. Um, and these instructional materials are needed uh, to give uh, orientation to our users that are still uh, wondering how or are not familiar with the online resources. And uh, they also did some uh, locating of uh, LIS materials from various databases so that they can get the links and uh, package it for dissemination in the form of an infographic or a list of materials and things like that. So that's what we do here in the Philippines. And I can tell you more because I think my five minutes is up, but thank you for listening. And I hope that you learned uh, from my short presentation. I'd also like to give credits to the sources of the photos that I used in the uh, presentation. And also uh, the ones who gave input uh, are my fellow LIS faculty members from the different LIS schools here in the Philippines. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, the participants from the Philippines. Uh, <laughs> you're very uh, active. Thank you for the support. See, uh, <laughs> we have active students from the Philippines. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. Yes, your students are very active, the most active, I would say. <laughs> Thank yes. you for your presentation, and it's very really interesting. Um, and uh, right now we are uh, moving to the uh, approach into our station um, with the LIS students. And I um, give a floor to Paria Tijalipur, who is my uh, colleague, co-moderator, and she will run the station. Thank you. All right. Th thank you, Alvina. And thank you, Kathleen. That was a very interesting presentation and to learn about different things that um, different countries do for uh, LIS students. Um, so I will move ahead and our next presenter is going to be Kevin, Kevin Tensiongo. He is uh, also presenting from Philippines and he will be uh, talking about an educator's point of view. Uh, so I will hand it over to Kevin. And um, at any point, if you have any questions from Kevin, please put it in Q&A. Uh, Kevin's presentation is about 10 minutes, and then we will have time for Q&A. Thank you very much, Maria. Hope that um, everybody can hear me loud and clear. So um, can I ask the moderator to please allow me to share my screen now? Okay. Okay, so good, eve um, good day, everyone. It's good evening in the Philippines. And at the same time, I'm very happy to present to you the opportunities in the anatomizing UELIS education and educator's point of view. I'm Kevin Cardia Titan Shonko, registered librarian from the Philippines. And I am studying the Ma Master of Library and Information Science at the University of the East. First and foremost, same with Ma'am. Eight earlier, we would love to recognize our Filipino students who are with us today and also all LIS students around the world. So this um, presentation would be a sharing of how we started and at the same time, how we continue with the program of LIS education in the Philippines. Earlier, we already had <clears throat> a general view of how we offer LIS in the Philippines. And in the case of the University of the East, it started its roots as a school for business and started in 1946, led by Dr. Francisco Tedalupon Senior and the group of business educators that initiated the classes made it their objective to help the country then still reeling from the effects of war at that period of time. 
It is located at the capital of the Philippines in Manila. And for the LIS program, to be specific, the University of the East Manila started to offer library science course during the school year in 1952 to 1953. As the first academic year that they offer LS or library science as a minor or major subject under the university's college of education. So the subject was named library science one for elementary reference with 18 students for morning schedule and 17 students in the afternoon schedule on that period of time. And since 1953, it's been about 68 years that the LIS program is present in the University of the East in Manila, Philippines. To give you a background of the timeline of the LAS education in the University of the East since 1952, where LS under the College of Education started, in 1955, we produced our first graduates of library science. In 1992, it has been called as a Bachelor of Science in Library and Information Science under the College of Arts and Sciences. And in 1990, um, RA or Republic Act 6966, which is the professional professionalization of librarians in the Philippines, started. And in 1994, we were able to produce two tap natures for the librarians, licensure examination that was mentioned also earlier. And this is the national examination of the Philippines as a qualifying exam to all who wants to practice librarianship in the Philippines. In 1997, the curriculum was revised. And in 2009, it was named BLIS, or the Bachelor of Library and Information Science, under the Commission on Higher Education Memorandum Number 8, Series of 2005. And currently, transitioning to the K-12 program of the Philippines educational system, there is a Bachelor of Library and Information Science, Commission on Higher Education Memorandum Number 24, Series of 2015, who address the new skills needed of the new graduates of the Bachelor of Library and in Information Science program. The Commission in Higher Education in the Philippines who monitor the higher education institutions or HEIs in the Philippines who provide the policies, the standards and guidelines for the Bachelor of Library and in Information Science or BLEES program. In the Philippines, those who would love to be librarians should um, take up a bachelor degree in library and information science, take the board examination or the national li librarian's licensure examination. And if you pass it, you can practice librarianship in the Philippines. Another option to those who did not take bachelor of library and information science, but with uh, a bachelor degree in other courses or programs, they can take our Master of Library and in Information Science or MLIS to be qualified to take the licensure examination. And when they pass it, they can practice librarianship in the Philippines. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just to give you a background of how many units or how many courses or subjects we offered on the curriculum of the University of the East with a summary of units with a total of 158 units. If you can see on my slide, and I'll not go one by one on this one because it would be a lot of explanation to do, but focusing on library practice as our part of our practicum and internship, we have a total of six units, which is about 600 hours of library practice. Additional of the ICT courses before having only Two, unit, um, two courses or subjects with a total of six units before in our old curriculum. The new curriculum provides 21 units of ICT courses that will address the specific needs of our ever-changing practice of librarianship, not only in the Philippines, but also around the world. At the same time, the university reviews its curriculum in assistance coming from the Commission on Higher Education's memorandum that adds special topics and other library and information science electives under curriculum, such as indigenous knowledge and multiculturalism, um, building and enhancing new literacies across curricula, and many more other things that was um, offered with a new curriculum, and many more. 
the library practice in the Philippines, as most probably it's the same was our keynote speaker mentioned earlier, the 600 hours in, our, in the case of our university is composed of internal library practice and external library practice. With that 600 hours, it will be divided to 300 hours internal library practice, which is, which is done within the university library and other branches libraries within the university. To give you a background, the University of the East Department of Libraries handles different uh, libraries within the university. We have the main library, we have the College of Dentistry Library, the Engineering Library, the Law Library, the Accounting Library, and many more other things. That's why with the 300 hours of internal library practice, our students are trained and at the same time additional on the archives of the university. We, they were trained from the reader services to the technical services of the university. And after taking the 300 hours internal library practice, they will also have their external library practice, which is um, divided into public library, special library, and school library, which is outside of the university. The challenges of the LIS education, specifically this time of pandemic, number one is the law of enrollment of our LIS students. Although the college or the College of Arts and Sciences who handles the BLEASE program of the university with the help of the alumni, continue to work to plan and to strategize on the design of how to market and promote the LIS program in the Philippines. And with that, 70 plus institutions in the Philippines who offer LIS in the country, that's a good number to continue to market and provide information that there is a growing market of librarians and a need in the Philippines. Another one is the transition to new curriculum. Because of the K-12 um, curriculum, faculties needs to prepare themselves, train, and attend workshops on the training of the new curriculum, which we are very happy because we have the Philippine Association of Teachers in Library and Information Science in partnership and most likely with the support of the iSchool, the University of the Philippines, SLIS, and some other partner agencies who help faculty in transitioning to the new curriculum by training us with the new subjects to be offered in the LIS education. Another challenge that we are facing is the online learning. Because of COVID-19 um, pandemic, our classroom changed from face-to-face -face or physical classroom to full online learning. So just for example, we are teaching online learning because currently I'm also teaching the Bachelor of Library and Information Science in the university. I have students coming from islands or different places within the Philippines. So the University of the East is located in Manila or in Luzon, but our students are coming from other islands in Visayas and um, elsewhere. So we need to look on how we can adjust to those students without internet and with other challenges along the way. And at the same time, we are crafting and drafting the flexible way on doing online library practice to identify practice outcomes that we can provide to our students with a new learning type of mode because of the current situation that we are facing right now. Librarian's licensure examination is again a national examination in the Philippines that we um, take uh, um, after we finish our Bachelor of Library and in Information Science or MLIS to those who did not take BLEES as their bachelor's degree. So most likely that is my presentation and sharing about the anatomizing UELIS education and educator's point of view. And just in case you are, you would love to ask questions that we can answer tonight, you can check me on my social media network, Scan the Librarian, and then Shankwa that Kevin Conrad at ue.edu.ph as my email address. With that, thank you very much. Maraming salamat, mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Thank you so much, Kevin. It was a great presentation. It's always really interesting to hear about all of these different things around the world. 
So if you have, if you uh, attended our previous webinars, what we usually did was that we had time at the end of each presentation for q and A. Q&A. I'm going to change it a little bit this time to give time for all of our presenters to talk about their uh, presentation. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to move to the next presenter. And then at the end, after everyone is done with their presentation, we will have sort of like a, a Q&A where everyone can answer. So um, what I'm going to do now, I will move to our next presenter, Sayyada Mahmoud Batul. She's from Pakistan and she's going to talk about her experience. Um, so it's all yours. And I hope you can share your screen. Oh, we, we, we can't hear you. Still no. <laughs> We still cannot hear you. <laughs> uh, please check your microphone, maybe Zoom. I chose the wrong microphone. Yes, so right next to the microphone, there is a, um, I call it a carrot. It's like a flash. Uh, if you click on that, it gives you the option of choosing your microphone. Maybe it's on the wrong microphone. No, it's still not working. No, it's still not working. Um, so uh, while you're working on it, how about I move to the next presenter and then I'll come back to you. Would that work with you? Okay. All right. Uh, the next presenter that we have is Lara Gerzovna. Um, sorry, I probably pronounced your last name wrong. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, she is from Croatia. So, uh, Lara, it's all yours. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I will share my screen now. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Laura Grzunov and I am a doctoral student and also a research assistant at the Department of Information Sciences at the University of Zadar. And today I will introduce you to the Written Heritage Project uh, that I worked on as a student and that prepared me actually for a job that I'm working today. Uh, I will first uh, say some basic things about the project. The first is certainly it's a longer name, which is digitization, bibliographic description, and research of text written on Glagolitic, Croatian Cyrillic and Latic script until the end of the 19th century in Zadar and Šibenik area. But in the following text, I will surely speak the abbreviated name, which is written heritage. So the project started in uh, 2016. The co-organizers of the project are Department of Information Sciences at the University of Zadar, Croatia, and Vestigia Manuscript Research Center at the University of Graz in Austria. The project is funded by Ministry of Culture of Republic of Croatia, University of Zadar, and Vestigia Institute, and also the foundation of the Croatian Academy on Sciences and Arts. The project leader is Associate Professor Mariana Tomic from the Department of Information Sciences at the University of Zadar. And the representative of the co-organizer is Professor Eric Reinhardt from the Vestigia Institute for Manuscript Research. So uh, project goals are digitization, bibliographic description, research, communication, and education of Zadar and Shibanik written heritage, but also the goal is to create a basis for, cross, for cross-institutional interdisciplinary center for research of Glagolitic heritage. But for the purposes of this presentation, I will only focus on student ed education and the knowledge that they have mastered while participating in the project. 
So before I start with the student assignments on the project, I will present the important results of the project. So more than 200 uh, manuscripts from three institutions were digitized on the project. Uh, 117 watermarks were digitized. More than 10 students uh, participated in the project and they wrote uh, three uh, master theses within the project. The project includes 19 institutions and many other associates uh, whose list you can actually see on the project website. So this project is an example of a uh, good practice of student involvement in digitization and digital cultural heritage projects. The participation of students in all project activities is especially important, which is why the project also acted as a teaching laboratory for information science students. Students started working on digitization as a part of a practical work and the pilot project at the graduate level of uh, their study, but uh, they were offered to continue working on the project uh, uh, during the internship, but also after the internship. On the project, students were in charge of making protocols, digitization using a special stand, photo processing, naming photos, archiving, and bibliographic description. Of course, <laughs> for doing all of that, we received a training concerning the expert handling of manuscripts operating the stand and the camera. Professor Renhard and Professor Tomic explained each step and task separately, and they, are, they supervised our work on the project. In order to achieve one of the goals of the project, which is the digitization of manuscripts, the Vestigia Institute for Manuscript Research provided us with a travel, traveler stand. Uh, it is a very special stand that enables in-house digitization uh, and conservationally safe digitization. This is how the traveler looks like, and this was also our working station. And this is one part of uh, the students who worked on the project. And in these images, uh, they digitize the manuscript. Uh, at least three students will, were always present during the digitization. Uh, one of the students was in charge of photographing, one of them was turning the pages of the manuscript, and one was supervising the photographs on the computer. This is what the project portal uh, looks like. A catalog of manuscripts is available on it, and next to it is actually a catalog of watermark, which I will discuss later. Here you can see what the description of the manuscript looks like and what metadata the description contains. Uh, and clicking on this small icon here uh, opens an interface where the digitized manuscripts can be viewed. This is the interface where the manuscript is viewed and the pages are scrolled. Uh, so uh, at our project, Professor Tomic and Professor Renhard formed a working group for the research of watermarks uh, with a couple of students on the project. Research preparation started in 2016, uh, but uh, actual research started in October 2017. So the specificity uh, of watermarks is that they are not visible to the naked eye, but only uh, in the light. Uh, it is for this reason that a slim light was used in the project. It is a special foil uh, whose light also does not heat the paper, which was very important. Uh, so the research procedure for watermarks is actually quite exhaustive. It starts with defining the structure of manuscripts, finding watermarks, deciding which ones to work on, then making drawings, images, dig digital photographs, trying to find appropriate names for the motives, comparing the motives and creating a catalog of watermarks. This is what the foil looks like. Uh, on the right picture, you can see the foil with the light on and you can also see uh, the watermark. Here you can see one example of making a structure uh, of manuscript uh, made by students. And uh, on the pictures below, you can see an example of digitized watermarks. Uh, one without measures and the other one is with measures of that watermark. 
This was actually the day when Professor Renhard showed us how watermarks are found, digitized, and measured. And in the second picture is actually our attempt to photograph and work on watermarks. So uh, what did we learn as students while working on the project? Well, from my point of view and experience, the project definitely prepared me for the future. Thanks to the project, I am actually here where I am now, attending doctoral studies, working as a research assistant, and passing on to my students all the knowledge I gained while working on the project. We had the opportunity to actually get to know specific material and work with it, get acquainted with watermark research, and present our results to the public, which actually influenced the development of presentational and communicational skills, uh, which are today very, very useful for all of us and uh, to me also. Although the digitization and description of manuscripts and watermarks have been completed, uh, due to its great uh, success, the project is actually now a part of a Center for Research in Glagolitism. It is a scientific research center at the University of Zadar, which was founded in 2020. The goal of this center is interdisciplinary study and interpretation and promotion of Croatian glagolithic. Uh, all digitized manuscripts from Written Heritage Project are actually now available at the uh, center portal, Glagolet portal. I actually put the link right here. And this is the main page of the center. And below you can see the previously mentioned catalog of manuscripts and catalog of watermarks. Uh, some of the center's activities are nowadays based on materials digitized as a part of Written Heritage Project. Students are also part of these activities, so they create virtual exhibitions based on digitized manuscripts and learn to create and display such valuable material in various tools for creating virtual exhibition. The results of the virtual exhibition were presented by students at the Bobcat conference. Within the center, uh, a pilot project, Let's Research Glagolitic Heritage Together was designed. It is actually a crowdsourcing project in which the public is invited to transliterate the digitized manuscript together. Here you can see the two tools in which students created virtual exhibitions that were created with materials digitized in a written heritage project. One of the tools is called Story Map Night Lab and one is called Space Time Layers. From all of this, it can be concluded that the project resulted in a catalog in which valuable manuscripts are available that will be used by scientists for their research, but it also educated students in various fields, such as old and rare material, cataloging, digitization, and presentation of digitized content. That is all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Laura. That sounds like a really interesting project. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will give you lots of, um, you know, practice when, or if you are already a librarian, um, when you start practicing all of these. Um, so when we get to the Q&A, &A, that's for everyone. I have some questions. <laughs> so now I think, uh, Sayyidah Mahmoud, I think your microphone seems to be working. I heard you. So can you try again? You are muted right now. Yes. Also. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Great. So it's I'm audible. Um, I'm audible. I can I can hear you. So you're good. So okay. um, I will so, pass it on to you. Um, let's begin with the presentation. You're just breaking up a little bit. Maria? Yes. Uh, Magda is ready to help uh, Sieda with microphone. Sieda, please uh, check your email. And we can uh, go further maybe to the next presenter and then I, back to Sieda. I, I think she's already sharing her screen. Yes, but I, I, I'm afraid that the sound is not a very good one. Yeah, I know I can't hear her at all anymore. 
Um, so um, if you can stop sharing your screen um, and work with Marta. So let me know if my uh, screen is sharing. Um, so yes, we, we your screen is sharing, but I think... Um, okay, and so am I audible now? Should I start? We can hear you, but we can't still see the screen. It just says that you have started sharing your screen, but we can't see your screen yet. Okay, I... Let me... Um, so while saying that I'm working on her microphone... Uh, yeah, please check your email for instructions. So is, is Satsi ready? You, I don't, you don't have yeah. your, okay. Yeah, we can start. Great, okay. So uh, our next presenter is going to be Satvir Nehra. He is joining us from India and talking about the LIS profession. Um, so feel free to start sharing your screen. My screen is visible. It is, but we don't yeah. see all of it. I'm just seeing. Okay, a okay, of okay. It. Just. Uh, it is still just a portion. Oh, okay, now it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. We can start. Uh, my name is Satvi and uh, I'm from India. I'm an English student, final year English student, and uh, my topic is English professionals require, requirement and, uh, and internships. So I can share my experience with uh, this uh, uh, program. Yeah, this is my uh, university library and uh, as well as my department and uh, my university offer uh, four programs like a bachelor masters and PhD in uh, library science so the uh, for getting admission in lis program uh, university conduct uh, a entrance exam or so uh, the student who uh, secure a minimum of 50 percent in eligible uh, eligible uh, criteria and uh, their graduation uh, they can uh, take uh, they can appear in the entrance exam and uh, based on entrance exam result they can uh, uh, take admission <laughs> and the university offering uh, them to admission to get admission in uh, these programs so yeah next so the uh, uh, I will uh, share my experience uh, regarding this uh, 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 practicum and internship. So, firstly, we uh, we try to understand the what is practicum. So, practicum uh, is a course in which theory uh, is put uh, into practice, and uh, it is uh, designed. It is uh, basically uh, basically it is uh, designed. Uh, designed to allow students to apply their academic knowledge into the uh, real uh, real world. As for, as future professionals, uh, students can develop competence and uh, confidence via practical training and experience by uh, participating in the uh, practicum uh, uh, practicum uh, classes. So practicum paired with the classwork and uh, often known as known as fieldwork hello um, you're good go ahead yeah okay uh, so basically uh, practicum paired with the classwork uh, often known as the fieldwork as or uh, service learning uh, work integrated learning or other type of internship uh, internship are a fluent element of many graduate and uh, postgraduate uh, programs. 
so uh, our department uh, organize every year national and international conference annual meets and uh, uh, workshop uh, workshop so student can uh, learn so much from these uh, activities and interact with the well known uh, list professionals and uh, professors so uh, we also have uh, two papers in uh, uh, our mlis curriculum like uh, first one uh, is dissertation and second one uh, is research method and statistical techniques so uh, so, uh, so with, uh, with with the help of these uh, these two courses students understand the concept and the type of various research uh, method and uh, uh, statistical techniques and tools so further they will be aware of the characteristics of design plan and uh, data collection analysis and uh, interpretation and uh, dissemination steps of the research pro uh, research process so the this program is uh, is to develop a strong uh, subject foundation for doctoral uh, level course in the library and information science yeah next is the benefit of uh, benefits of the uh, these activities so uh, practicum give lis students to chance uh, to see how things work uh, the different approaches to being a list professor uh, list professional and to different ways uh, ways we we connect with people so a student can interact with the professionals at these conference seminar and webinars and uh, in the workshop uh, student interact with new technology and gain uh, new knowledge through this lis professionals get important insight into the day to day reality of their profession and uh, the way, uh, the way in which uh, the uh, professionals actual work so to gain field experience student apply the, this uh, john dewey's theory learning by doing so on the ground and the practicum mean it is a hand on approach to learning so uh, they can work independently and uh, fulfill their market requirements and independent uh, independently conduct uh, studies relevant to library and information science and uh, to increase the theoretical knowledge uh, based on provide evidence for information decisions so student will be able to conduct uh, studies to evaluate the impact uh, effectiveness and uh, efficiency of the library uh, services and uh, library collection among the uh, among the users the uh, the primary goal uh, for the students so the main objective for the students are uh, are to acquire knowledge and uh, insight into the way in which his or her knowledge uh, and uh, analytical skills can be applied in a practice so uh, to select and apply appropriate research method and uh, to develop personal and uh, intrapersonal competencies and uh, entrepreneurial and management attitudes and skills and uh, including the ability to work in the uh, team to uh, it is very helpful to become aware of the professional world and uh, is in a, and uh, uh, this um, uh, list infrastructure and uh, is also helpful to acquire positive uh, professional ethics and uh, to gain an awareness uh, on her capabilities so uh, and uh, this is also helpful to learn how uh, how uh, uh, these experience will help in uh, our future as a list professional and it's also increase uh, like employability uh, by acquiring uh, this knowledge and uh, these skills and uh, providing evidence uh, of the experience so these are the basically primary goals uh, for the students and uh, for the the main objective for the host uh, institutes are the to to take advantage of the uh, stimulating effect of having a student who have a new uh, perspective uh, by uh, posing uh, questions 
and uh, to uh, take uh, advantage of information of new trend and development in the uh, LIS field. And it's also uh, helpful to utilize the placement intensive or for intensive for vacancies as selection tool and uh, uh, also helpful to getting benefit from having an additional person with their problem in uh, solving problems and in a particular to promote uh, successful professionals. So these are the basically the uh, primary uh, goals for the host inst institutes. Yeah, so uh, here uh, there are uh, some challenges for the LIS professionals, like uh, uh, the, uh, there is a lack of seed availability in the internship because the hosting institutes are uh, significant less in India and uh, the time bound is also a challenge for, uh, for students because once uh, they enroll, they cannot leave before uh, their time is over or if uh, any student uh, live before their term, then they did not get uh, anything like uh, their labor cost uh, and uh, experience certificate. Uh, many students belong to uh, villages or rural area, so they are not friendly with the new technology. So they are uh, facing many issues uh, with new technology. So the lack of technical knowledge is also uh, a challenge here and uh, uh, many institute uh, offer uh, minor uh, stephen and unpaid internship so the student are not getting uh, stephen equal to their hard work so uh, this is also a challenge and the lack of awareness of this program is also a challenge for this course like uh, uh, students they did not know like uh, what uh, what will they do after uh, completing their MI, MLIS and uh, BLIS and uh, like my here uh, this COVID-19 and pandemic uh, uh, or uh, natural disaster is also a challenges in this uh, current scenario because like uh, my university uh, department also provide these practical training and uh, internship at uh, various central universities and uh, inst institutes. But uh, uh, due to this uh, uh, current situation in COVID-19, the all, all going, uh, all uh, like uh, in my university, uh, uh, university suspended all uh, offline activities and only online classes uh, classes will uh, have happening. So uh, like uh, I'm also uh, uh, not have any experience regarding this. And uh, so this is also a challenge for the list professional. And the uh, last is a conclusion. So the, uh, in, in my uh, uh, point of view, the, uh, Practicum experience will fit their uh, professional goal and uh, practicum, uh, practicum experience also benefit from the host institution. Uh, institution that are uh, uh, dedicated to uh, 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 surprising students and uh, increasing their uh, continuing, uh, continuing their education. And uh, practicum in library and information science course uh, serve as a uh, a specialized link between theory and uh, practical work and uh, profession uh, on one hand, uh, one hand and uh, uh, theory and practical uh, work on the other hand. The LIST program employ pra uh, practicum as a model to enhance the library school curriculum in order better to prepare graduates for the professional and uh, professional jobs. So while it is critical to uh, work closely with the industry to provide students uh, with opportunities for uh, like a experimental uh, learning and the uh, development of the uh, development of practical uh, skill and knowledge. It is also uh, critical to ensure uh, this is done uh, systematically and with a genuine desire on the uh, part of uh, employer to collaborate. Yeah, uh, this is from my side. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening to me. And uh, if you have any query, please. Thank you so much, Sapir. I really like that uh, slide yeah, where you were talking you. about 
how the host also benefits from, you know, the LIS program. And maybe that's something that many times we just tend to forget to look at. So it was very interesting. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's go back to Sayyid Ahmed and see if it works. See okay. Why. Now, please tell if it is audible. Oh, yeah. that's great. <laughs> go ahead and share your okay. screen. Okay. Let me share my screen. All right, looks great. It's all yours. Good day, everyone. This is Saida Mehmaz Batool, and uh, I am final year student of Institute of Information Management, uh, and I'm enrolled in University of the Punjab. Um, first of all, I really feel privileged uh, to be part of this platform and being a representative of Pakistan makes me even more glad. So let's begin with the presentation. Okay, uh, so my presentation will uh, basically share the librarian information science education in Pakistan. I'll share some uh, legacy systems prevailing in Institute of uh, Information Management, uh, in Institute of Information Management. And I'll share my practical experience uh, about my project, which I did uh, during my degree in uh, Institute of Information Management. Okay, and I did the social media marketing and I'll share why going digital is important. And of course, I'll uh, introduce you with my team. So basically, uh, what is library and information uh, science in Pakistan? Uh, library and information science program in, in the, uh, India and Pakistan began in 1915 with the arrival of Asa Don Dickinson, an American librarian at University of the Punjab. Librarian information science is now offered at all levels from undergraduate to PhD. The horizons of librarian information science education have been changing in response to various, various kind of constant technological and social developments. Pakistan enjoys the honor of having the first ever school of library education in Asia. Currently, uh, bachelors in library and science, masters, MPhil, PhD are being offered in library and information science schools. Institute of Information Management. Uh, Basically, I'm associated with this uh, institute, and I'll share with you that uh, the Department of uh, Information Management in University of Punjab, Lahore, offers high quality education and uh, research uh, facilities uh, to meet the needs of an emerging information and knowledge society in Pakistan. Information management has the services of internationally known eminent senior and young faculty comprising PhDs and MPhils, uh, along with visiting faculty with outstanding and academic uh, credentials. And uh, basically, uh, it is a practical based learning uh, incorporated with theory. Okay, so uh, Institute of Information Management trains its students in, in many ways, apart from making uh, students information literate, our institute works on digital literacy skills too. Combining theory and practice along with internship in final semester, makes a perfect information professional ready to serve communication uh, information seekers. So I'll share my practical project. Uh, I did uh, a project with Contonement Public Library. Uh, I designed a logo and brochure of the library and uh, I promoted the library on uh, social media. Branding. Branding is, uh, first we will talk about what is branding. Branding is basically um, creating a name or symbol or a design that identifies and differentiates a product from other similar products in the industry. Besides from making a lasting uh, impression on customers, the role of marketing and branding is also giving an image of what you can offer to your customers and clients in an, and in our case, our readers and information seekers. Okay, so uh, the logo I created uh, has certain elements. First is flambo and it represents, you know, life and hope. And the second element is book. It is obviously a knowledge resource and 
hands basically represent uh, you know power and protection and the tag tagline which i chose for cantonment public library is lifeline for life learner and this is basically the logo in a combined form you can see the flambeau uh, the knowledge resource and hands and tagline all combined so basically this is the brochure which i designed for cantonment public library and it includes the, the services uh, the library is offering uh, in their uh, in, uh, in their institution uh, they are offering research uh, programs are organized and events which includes workshops training sessions uh, for information seekers there are exhibitions and there also a separate section for women and uh, i incorporated the the history of Kantoman Public Library also in the brochure. So why going digital is important? This is a question which uh, we should ask uh, to ourselves. There are 4.2 internet uh, users, 4.2 billion internet users. So you can potentially reach 4.2 billion people by going digital, by promoting your uh, services and pro by promoting your, uh, you know, uh, your services on digital platforms, on social media platforms like Facebook, uh, Twitter, or you can also engage your readers via WhatsApp uh, and uh, other social media pla platforms. So. Uh, I did social media marketing of Cantonment Public Library via Facebook, and I provided them with an initial uh, thousand followers uh, just for boosting it up. And uh, the fa uh, Facebook page, which I created, I'll show it you. Uh, uh, just the interface, I would share it with you. This is the interface. It uh, it has the uh, tagline. Uh, it has the title of the um, library, and uh, this is the interface of the Facebook page I created. Okay, so uh, this was my practical experience and uh, I would uh, share a, present, a documentary at the end of this presentation. So my basically presentation and dedicate it to which is uh, who's Sayyid Gayur Hussain. Uh, this, uh, uh, you know, presentation on uh, such a big platform. I'm, uh, I will introduce you with my team. My team, uh, this is my chairman, Dr. Mahmood. And, uh, this is my project supervisor, Dr. Noreen. And this is uh, Sir Kassel Kamar, he is assistant secretary to Petroleum Library. Uh, they all have me so I would specially thank uh, to all my teachers, Dr. Amara Malik, uh, Dr. Ali Arshad, Dr. Muhammad Rifi, uh, just helped me out and they motivated me to uh, just uh, this. Okay, that's all. So I would uh, present a video. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you're an artist. That was a really nice logo that you created. Um, but I think and if I can share it, let me know if it is or uh, you're good, but I think you're breaking up. Um, but thank you so much for your presentation. Um, so I was going to ask a couple of questions at the end from everyone, but Albina, do you think we have time or do you, do we need to wrap up? Yes, uh, unfortunately we are out of time and okay. I suggest that uh, those questions that we have, uh, Saida, could you please stop sharing the screen so we can see all our, our speakers? Just a second. I would suggest that our speakers will uh, answer uh, in emails. They will write us their uh, answers. And uh, after that, we will post uh, answers uh, on uh, social media of the division four units. How's that? That, that sounds great. Yeah. Yes, because unfortunately we are running out of time. Yes, uh, just a second. I will try to, yeah, here, is. here we go. Okay. 
I will remind you that uh, today we had four uh, wonderful presentations from LIS students from four countries, the Philippines, India, Pakistan, and Croatia. Big thank you to all of them. It was, uh, was awesome. Uh, and also, I would like to tell you that uh, during these three webinars, we had, as I said already, 14 students who presented um, their ideas and projects and uh, shared uh, their experience with us. And we appreciate, uh, we appreciate for this. And uh, these 14 students uh, represented eight countries. And I will just, I would like to name these countries. It's Bulgaria, Croatia, India, Norway, Pakistan, Russia, the Philippines, and United States. And we hope that uh, next time uh, there will be more countries uh, participating in our project. And we're going to continue a webinar series this year uh, in October. There will be the next webinar. So we engage uh, all of you, we inspire all of you to participate in this uh, great project, as we, we think. We hope that this is the great project anyway. <laughs> So, also, I would like to um, thank uh, all colleagues from the Division 4 uh, units who, uh, as I already told, uh, um, made it happen, this project, and colleagues that started this uh, project. And uh, especially, I would like to um, thank uh, members of the project team. Uh, Parit Jilpur, who was uh, our moderator during these uh, three webinars, uh, Maya Simonovic, uh, Magda Gamulka, Andreas Rinoso, uh, Lloyda Garcia Febo, Katarina Isbeck, uh, the chair of the Division 4, uh, Kendra Albright, the chair of the Section on Education and Training. All of them uh, made uh, a huge work during these uh, months or when we started, when we created this project. Thank you to all of you who participated, who worked with us uh, during these three months, who um, followed us and uh, who watched us, how we uh, prepare, organize this uh, uh, project. And we will be looking forward to see you, to meeting you next uh, webinar at the next webinar in October and further October, November and next year. So please stay tuned and follow us on uh, social media. And uh, I wish you to have uh, a good summer <laughs> and good vacations. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.